All right, so this is sort of where we left off in the last video. And what I want to do now in this video is extend what we've done. So if you go ahead and plug this in, you can see that what we have is we have the binary output, which will output um, all three digits based off this counter, and it'll go through all three digits on this single display. So right now we're displaying the number 123. So you see it goes three, and then it'll go two, and then it'll go one uh, eventually. Yeah, there you go. So what I want to do now is the next step is to actually show uh, the number on all three of these displays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect all three of these displays together right now. All right, so we have that hooked up, so the same number is showing on all three of these displays. Now, the next step is to actually get the right number to show on the correct display. So the number that we're outputting right now is 123. So the 1 should be here, the 2 should be here, and then the 3 should be here. Now, the way we're going to do this is that if we're outputting the hundreds place, we want to turn these two displays off. And then when we're outputting the tens place, we want this display on and these two displays off. And then when we're outputting the ones place, we want this display on and these two displays off. So the next question is, how do we know which one we're outputting? Well, we already did that in the last video where we built this uh, counter circuit here, which counts through the different displays. So we know that if this is showing a zero and a zero, then we're outputting the ones currently. And if this shows a zero and then a one, then we're outputting the tens right now. And if this shows a 1 and then a 0, then we know we're outputting the hundreds right now. So now the next step is to build the logic to turn these individual displays on. And the way we're going to do that is by choosing which of these displays connects to 5, 5 volts and which of these displays is then grounded. So that's what we're going to work on right now in today's video. So it's going to be our display multiplexer, the circuit that we're going to design right now. And the easiest way to, the first thing that you want to do when you're designing a circuit is obviously like we've always done, is start with the truth table. So I'm just going to design our truth table, and then we can have our line going down the side. So then our inputs on this side of the truth table are going to be our inputs A and B. And what do these lines describe? Well, these describe our yellow wires here, where this line is A and this line is B. And then our outputs are going to be these three displays, which of them connects to uh, power. So we're going to be controlling whether or not these resistors go to 5 volts. Now right now they're tied to 5 volts, but we're going to be control we're going to be tying them to our control lines later. So the first is the first output is going to be our Q hundreds place. Then we're going to have our Q tens place, and then lastly we're going to have our Q ones place. So when it's 0 0, then that means we're outputting the ones place right now. So we want this off, we want this off, and we want the ones place to be showing. And then when we're at 0, 1, we're talking about the tens place right now. So this is off, this is on, and this is off. And then for 1, 0, likewise, just like that. So now the question is, how do we build a circuit that does this? Now you can buy multiplexer ICs, but there's really no point for something that's as simple as this. Now for something like a 4 to 16 line decoder that we talked about in one of the videos before, maybe you, you'd buy a multiplexer like I did. But for this, we really don't need a multiplexer. We can just design a circuit that does this for ourselves. So the first one would be A, B. We would go into a NOT gate on each of these, and then we would come out here. And that would give us our Q0. So you can see that the only way that this Q0 is high with this circuit is, is if the inputs are 0, 0, because then these will both get inverted to 1, 1, and then the AND gate will be true. So we've, we're done with this column is what that means, because on any other one of these inputs, um, the output will be zero. So we're done with the Q1's place. We've programmed, we've made a circuit to control our Q1's place. So now we can work on our Q10's place, which we can actually do pretty much the same thing. Um, just instead, we only invert this input. So we can have A, so you can have A goes into the NOT gate, and then B doesn't, and we can just have them both meet up at our AND gate and this will control our Q tens place. And you can see that the only way that this is true is if the input is 0, 1. So we're done with this column. So now the last one is the Q hundreds place, and you can get the pattern by now. This one's going to be a 1, so we're just going to have that go straight in. And this one is going to get inverted, and that will control our Q hundreds place. So right now we just have to plug up our wires like this, and we've already built everything to follow this truth table. So then the next step is that this is just going to go through our resistor into our display and same thing on this one to our display and this is going to go to our display so then once we do this our binary to decimal dis uh, display converter will be completely finished so let's go ahead and build this circuit 
sorry, small error here. It's actually called a demultiplexer, not a multiplexer. Multiplexer is when you go from two lines down to say one line, like we did in our selector uh, circuit for the RAM module. Um, but here, when we're going from two lines to say four lines, but we're not using we're not using the fourth line here. It's called a demultiplexer. Um, so just in case you wanted to buy the IC instead of building it, just know you're looking for a demultiplexer. But of course, always look at the data sheet before you purchase any chip to make sure. Okay, so looking here, we used one AND gate and we used one NOT gate, I believe. So that means we have five NOT gates remaining here and we have three AND gates remaining here, which is good because we need exactly three and I believe, I think we need four NOT gates. So we'll have one extra, but this will work out fine. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to build this circuit and I think I'm going to use green to build it and we'll take a look at whether or not this display is working when I'm finished. Now we're going to have to connect this part up to the rest of our CPU so that this way when we say add a number then we can say oh what's 12 plus 12 is equal to 24. So we'll connect this up to the rest of the CPU when we move on in the next video. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohudin and I will catch you guys later.